Allah Ta'ala wants that other be shown. وَمَنْ يُعَذِّرْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْبَلْ قُلُوبِ Whoever shows other to the sha'ir, to the signs of Allah Subh'ana wa Ta'ala, it is from the piety of their hearts, it is the sign that they are taqwa. And who do not, does not have other, it is a sign that there is something wrong in their hearts. So Allah Ta'ala wants that other be shown. Once I was in Chicago, and there was a gentleman who, was, who put Qur'an on the floor in the masjid, and he was reading the Qur'an. And I didn't say anything, I just took a rahal and I put it in front of him and held the Qur'an and put it on top of the rahal, that uh, sort of a mini thing. And he looked at me and he said, oh, Tahir, Tahir, and he saw the cure, and he said, what are you doing? And it's not about being Tahir or not being Tahir, it's not about being pure or not being pure, it's about other. It's about respecting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to show other this ayah that I've just recited of when you of them, Sha'ain Allah ni fa inna min taqwal khuluq. If people show other ta'zim to the Sha'ain of Allah ta'ala, it is a sign that they have taqwa in their hearts. In other words, if people do not show other, they do not have taqwa, or they will never be able to achieve taqwa without proper etiquette. So please, we have to make sure that we take care of the proper ada, proper etiquette of majalis gatherings like these of Vikr and Ed. So what I wanted to talk about today was that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent as the messenger of Allah. And he was the messenger of our Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he picked a few select people from his ibad, from his human beings to take that message to the human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have sent a book and that could have been enough but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sunnah is always, always that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this deen to the people through through people. There is Kitabullah and there are Rijalullah. There is the book of Allah and there are people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has always used to deliver His message. Why? Because a human, only a human being can, can deliver a message to a human being. A robot cannot. An angel cannot. Angels do, 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 angels do not even have emotions. We have emotions. How can an angel really understand that what do human beings go through? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose a person or He chose people to deliver His message to the human being. It has always been the case, by the way. Messengers are no messengers. Even after the Prophet, last Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the deen has come to us through people as the beloved Imam here, Dawud Barakatuhu was saying, right? After the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the next generation took it and then the next generation. And this deen, this religion has come to us through people. It has never come through us through books. One of the big problems of this day and age is that you know, people don't understand that anymore. And if you want to, you know, it's of somebody who, who wants to learn deen, and there are some people who say, oh, go, you know, you, you go and read Quran, or read Bukhari, or read Muslim. It's very amazing. You know, in our studies, when we do our alim studies, the Sahih and Bukhari, Sahih and Muslim are taught in the eighth year, eight. <laughs> and we, a foundation is set for seven plus years. In fact, there is even, of course, other basic studies that people do. And then we are able to reach a level that we are, we can understand a little bit of Bukhari Sharif and Muslim Sharif and the other books of Hadith. So it's not books. They're always people. We always need a role model. You always need a person, a human being, who will teach you this thing. This deen has reached the Ummah through Kitabullah and through Rijalullah. Always. And Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the chosen being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was given this task of delivering the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was that message? In reality, what was that message? This is the question. One of the 
hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said that inna ma du'istu li utammi ma makaram al akhlaq. That the only reason that I have been sent, the only reason, inna ma, this word inna ma is actually used for something called hasr. Yani, this is it's bounding whatever coming is coming next. So, so, so the, it's bounding the reason that the only reason that I have been sent. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to perfect noble character. Yani all what is given, in reality the output is the noble character. For example, prayers. What does a prayer do? Inna salata tanha anil fashayi wal munkar. The true prayer, if it is done in the true way, and we have to learn how to do it in a true way, none of us do it, in reality it stops us from fahsha and munkar from no, immodest things and from evil things. What does the fasting do? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba alayhi ladheena min qamlikum la'allakum tattakun The goal of fasting is taqwa which is again it is, a, it is something related to our character. What does the zakat do? خُذْ مِنْ أَمْبَالِهِمْ صَدَقَ تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا The goal of charity, zakat, is also purification of the heart. And purification of the heart in result is, the, it, it, it brings down, brings out the character of people. What does hajj do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ بِهِنَّ الْحَجَّةِ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ Make sure you don't fight. Make sure you don't talk immodest. Make sure that you don't sin during hajj. What is coming out as a result? Character. So the whole deen boils down to character. Of course we have to have our faraid. We have to have our rituals. We all have to follow what is mandatory upon us. Because that's also taking us toward that character building. We have to pray five times a day. Five times a day, not four times a day. People, subhanAllah, they have made their own sharia. Oh, I pray four times a day. I'm struggling, but I'm, I'm, and now I'm up to four times. Well, it is five times a day. And then there are people, oh, you know, I come back home at work from work. And you know, I pray, Lord, Asar, Maghrib, at home at the time of Isha. Well, who has allowed you to do that? Our, be, our own Shariat makers. Very amazing. So we have to do our Fara'id. We have to do our fasting. We have to give up the God if Allah has given us enough. We have to go on Hajj if we have the capability to do so. That is mandatory. For the fard means that there is no option. Yani we are the slaves of Allah Taala. When we are slaves, when we are ibadullah, a slave doesn't have an option. A slave does not have an op- option. Somebody asks a slave, "What do you eat?" He said, "Whatever my master gives me to eat." So, what do you drink? Whatever my master gives me to drink. What do you what do you wear? Whatever my master gives me to wear. He doesn't even have the option. You look into the film of slavery. He doesn't have an option. Of course, you know, we are I suppose to to be best the best with them, but it is up to the master. Slave doesn't have an option and we are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't have an option. And the people have made their own sharia as if they are the masters of their own selves. SubhanAllah. So we have to do our mandatory things, but subhanAllah the people who even go become serious in deen, they think this is their deen. They think this is their deen. Deen is far more than that. Deen is something more than just doing some our, our five daily prayers and fasting in the month of Ramadan and giving zakat and going for hajj. It is the perfection of the character. We are here to become human beings. Deen is to make human beings human beings. Deen is to make human beings. Subhanallah, sometimes, sometimes people become worse than animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that there are few people who are worse than animals. Ula'ika kal an'am bal hum agal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are like animals, in fact worse than animals. Why? Ula'ika humul ghafilun, because they're heedless people. They don't even know why they've been sent into this.
and they call themselves people. They're worse than these harmful enemies. Really. They don't like things, good things happening around them. You know, when my sheikh, he went to some place and there were a lot of lob- lobsters, no, what do you call that? I think it was lobsters or prawns. So, you know, they were in an open jar and there was no lid. So my sheikh asked the person who was in charge of that place, you know, why did you keep it open? I mean, they are, but they will come out. He said, no, 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 look what they do. So, you know, one of the, I think it was, what's the smaller thing? Is, huh? Crabs. 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 I think crabs. Whatever. Crabs or monsters or whatever. You know, so what they did, so that started, you know, walk, uh, start climbing the glass wall. And after it reached a certain state, you know, another crab or lobster, it came from beneath and it pulled us back. And another tried to climb the wall, and another lobster or crab came and pulled us back. He said, Look, nobody, none of these crabs, the lobster will let the other go out of the glass vessel, glass jar. This is exactly what human beings are like. Some people will not even let anybody progress in their life. There are people like that. SubhanAllah, very amazing. This has become the character of people. But this is not what Deen tells us. We, SubhanAllah, have our beards and our amamas and our topis and our jubbas and our abayas and our niqabs and our hijabs. But SubhanAllah, looking at the character of people, this is such a such pathetic character. They harm people with their, with their tongue, with their language, with their words. They have jealousy and animosity and hatred in their hearts for other people. This is the character of people and they call themselves Muslims, subhanAllah. This is not what deen is all about. Deen is innama bu'istuli utammima makaram al-akhlaq. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the only reason that I've been sent is to perfect noble character. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has said to the Prophet sallallahu that what you have the most is your character. إِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَزِيمٍ Oh my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are on a mass character. There are three types of character. One type of character is called إخلاق الحسن or إخلاق العالية. You know, good character. Say Allah Ta'ala said to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ya Khalili, Hassin Khuluqaka walaw ma'al kufa. That you make your character good even if it's with non-believers. So having good character, ikhlaq al-hasana, it means that if anybody oppresses you, you oppress him with the same status as well. That was the ikhlaq of the Jews. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that. That anna nafsa bin nafsi wal aina bil aini wal anfa bil anfi wal uzuna bil uzuni wa sinna bil sinni. Then a lie for life and an eye for eye and nose for nose and an ear for ear and a tooth for a tooth. Yet he's taking revenge of only how much he oppressed you. If he hit you this much, you also hit him this much. This is the ikhlaq al hasana. That you don't oppress other person. In other words, you only do as much they have done wrong to you. This is ikhlaq al hasana. And then there is another category of ikhlaq, which is called ikhlaq al karima, the noble character. And this was the character that was given to the Christians. What was that? That if somebody does wrong to you, you forgive him for the sake of Allah. As they say, you know, if you offer, if they slap you on one side of the cheek, you offer him the other side, the other cheek. Okay, you slap here as well. This is Ikhlaq al Karim. Somebody, Isa, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam was standing, somebody came and he started saying bad words to him. And Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam gave him du'as. He gave him du'as as a result. And somebody asked him, what's happening? He's abusing you, you are making du'a for him. And Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam said, Kullu ana'in yatarashahu bima fihi That every one brings out what he has. He has filth in his heart, he is giving out filth. I have good in my heart, I am just giving out good. So this is an ikhlaq. Al-Qarimah. Yani, you forgive.
forgive other person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't take any revenge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our deen has given permission, permission to have both of these sort of ikhlaq. Yani if somebody oppresses you to take revenge, but only according to what he has oppressed. That's it, not more than that. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also encouraged us that we forgive people for the sake of Allah. But our deen, Islam has gone even a step further. And that is ikhlaqul azimah. The high character. Our deen teaches us high character. What is that? That if somebody oppresses you, you not only forgive him, but you do good to him. Allah Akbar. This is the ikhlaq that has been taught to me and you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if somebody does bad to you, what do you do? That you repel it with something good. You would see that this person who is acting as an, any, as, as, a, as an oppressor to you, if you repel that bad with good ikhlaq, you would see that very soon he would become your intimate friend. As if there was no animosity, Allah Akbar. This is the ikhlaq that has been taught to me and you. Islam has taught ikhlaq al azimah. How many of us do that? Honestly speaking. How many of us have ikhlaq al azimah? That is the fa'abilati hi ahsan. Ajeeb. In the Battle of Uhud, Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anu ajmain, they made a mistake. We know the story of Uhud, yeah? What happened in the Uhud? That Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked a group of Sahaba to be behind a, a small little hill and protect, guard the other Muslims from that place. And he said, don't move. Don't move from here until I tell you that you can move. And these Sahaba, they thought at a certain point in the battle that the battle is over, the, the, the disbelievers have run away, and they thought they can also join the other believers to collect the booty of all. That was their own ishtihad, their own decision. They thought that the battle is over. And they didn't wait for the Prophet to see it and they left that place. And the, the kuffar, the disbelievers, when they saw that the, it is unprotected area, and Khalid bin Walid, Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, who was at that time the leader of the disbelievers, he saw that this place is empty, so he came back and he attacked the believers from behind. And actually, you know, they were assaulted. They almost won the war. They almost won the war. So many Sahaba got shaheed. Just imagine the loss that was incurred to the believers. Not only that, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his blessed teeth got shaheed on that day. He was bleeding all over. This was the nuqsan, the loss that incurred for this, such a huge mistake that happened. What did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala say to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah Ta'ala said, Fa'akwa Doesn't matter. Forgive them. Not only that, this is number one, right? Forgive them. What's the fillahum? And you make dua of istighfar for them. Make dua of their forgiveness for them. And another step another step was shamir humfil amri. And not only that, you do mashwara with them. You have consultations with them. Allah Yani totally remove that feeling from your heart as it and nothing happened. Seventy Sahaba got shaykhi. Seventy Sahaba. Not a small number. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got hurt. He was bleeding all over. But despite of that loss that got, that incurred, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is saying, you know, these people who actually made that mistake, doesn't matter, fa'fu anhum, astaghfir lahum, wa shabir fil This is ikhlaqul azimah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from all of us. Allah ta'ala says that people of Iman are those wal kazumin al They control their anger. Wal aafina anil nas. And they forgive people. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. And people, Allah loves the people of Ihsan. Allah loves the people of excellence and beauty of their character. Subhanallah. 
said when Athena and in Nas, he said, don't worry, go, I've forgiven you. And she said, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen, Allah loves the people of Insan. He said, go, I've set you free. Allah. This is the ikhlaq of the believers. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in one of the hadith, silman qata'aka. You join with those who cut off from you. This is Islam. You join with those who cut off from you. Not only join with those who smile at you. If there is somebody, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your aunt, you know, they decide not to talk to you anymore. What does our deen teach? Silman qata'aka. You join with those people who cut off from you. Wa'a'ati man haramaka. And you give to those who do not give to you, who deprives you. You give to those who deprive you. It's not that somebody gives you a gift and you give to them a gift in return. What sort of a class is that? In fact, they are better than you because they have give, initiated that gift to you. If you are returning a gift to them, what sort of a class is that? You give to those who deprive you. If you think that uh, there are some people who do not give to you anymore any gifts, you go and give out gifts to them. Wa'fu amman zalamaka, and you forgive those people who oppress you. Who ahsin ila man asa'a ilayka, and do good towards the one who offends you. This is the, this is the being of Islam, my friends. Everyone is good with the one who is good to them. It's not a good, it's not a big deal. Before 
Sunnah will be with me on the day of judgment. Allah in paradise. How come upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Subhanallah, this is Sunnah. People follow outward Sunnahs, but these are also to be followed because these are the goal of the day to make human beings human beings. We are human beings. Allah Taala made us human beings, and Allah Taala wants us to <laughs> to act like human beings. And this is why the has been said in Namaburistu This is the prophetic mission, which is to perfect noble character. This is why He came to make all of us human beings, not act like animals. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one of the hadiths he said, "Irhamu man fil ardi, yarhamu man fil sama." That you show mercy to the people on the earth and one in the heavens will show mercy on you. Did for that as you saw, so shall you reap. Jazaan min jins al amal. Then when Allah Shabbat Shalom we saw Rahmanullah Taala, he said that you know there somebody had a wife and he she committed a big mistake. Huge mistake, which if he had wanted, the husband had wanted, he could have divorced her, and it's such a big mistake. But he said that he thought that she is a slave of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. She is a slave of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If I divorce her, she will get worried. Where will she go? So he forgave her. He died. Somebody saw him in his dream, and he he asked him what happened, and. That person said that you know Allah Taala said to me that you forgive one of my slaves. You forgive one person thinking that she is my slave. I also forgive you because you are my slave. Irhamu man fi ardi, irhamu man fi sama. There was an elder man in old days. It comes in the books that he used to work in a grocery store, and in those days there were no cash. You know, there were only gold coins and dirham uh, and, and silver coins, the dirham and the dinar. So there was a person who would come to him thinking he's an old simple man. He would give him fake coins. He knew that it was they were fake coins, but he didn't say a word to that person. He didn't say a word to that person. Every time he'll come, give him fake coins, but he will accept that and give him whatever he was in need of. When he was on his, he became very sick and he thought that he's going to die. You know, he had all of these fake coins, of course, in a separate place because he didn't want to mix it up with the other money. So he brought that that bag of fake coins and he put it in front of himself and he made a dua. He said, "Ya Allah." For your sake, I always accepted these fake coins from this person. Ya Allah, you please also accept my fake actions. I have been doing fake actions all my life. All of us are have been doing fake actions all our lives. This is all fake. So, man, Allah, we look into the seerah of what Sahaba were doing. Every single thing that we do looks like we are fake, and we are indeed fake. He said, Ya Allah, I have been accepting these fake coins for your sake. You also please. My fake actions. This is ikhlaq. This is ikhlaq. Once there was a big shay. I can't remember his name right now, but big mufti as well. And people will come to him, ask questions, consult with him. You know, a woman came to him, and she had to ask a question. And when she came in in his presence, Mahala, she passed gas. She passed wind with with sound. Now she was very embarrassed, of course. So he, she, he realized that she is getting embarrassed. So she asked a question, and the sheikh said, "I'm sorry. What did you say? Can you please say a little loud?" And she said it again a little. Can you please say it again? I, I didn't hear properly. She was acting as he couldn't hear, and not the woman. Thank God, and she, he, he doesn't he listen loud. He didn't under. He must have not have listened to the sound of money passing away. And Subhanallah, she came, went back, you know, with peace, without any embarrassment. After that, this Sheikh he pretended for the rest of his life as if he listens now, so that if she somehow find out that I know, that she will feel embarrassed about it later in her life as well. This is it. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala wants that we develop this ikhlaq, my friend. You know the value of the tree is according to the fruit that it bears. Everybody will want to have apple trees and orange trees and pomegranate trees, and nobody will want trees that doesn't give anything and have thorns that you try to touch it and it will harm you, right? If we have
everybody will want to be with us. The, the whole system of this universe will exist. But if we have bad character, if we are there to harm people all the time, and that's what we are doing, that's why we see all of this chaos in the society. You go to the court, and you will see there are people you know, not even finding time to find their cases, right? The Lord will say, you know, you have a day of three months down the road. Why is that? Because there are so many people who are just trying to harm other people. You go to the police station and see, you know, what happens. Every single day there are so many cases that come to them. You go to the Mashiach, you, you see, you hear from them that what happens. You go to the Mufti, you hear from them what happens. So all the people come to me and I know that what are people doing out there? They call themselves believers. It's not belief, my friends. Because that's not what our deen teaches. Our deen has come to us to teach us that perfect character and that is the prophetic mission. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his character, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, if we start talking about his character, what we need another three hours. But it was an amazing character that he had. So in Aisha Radiallahu Ta'ala Anna, she said, Futihat al Madina to Bil Ikhlaq. That Madina was actually conquered with Ikhlaq. There was no sword. Where was the sword? When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually had that kingdom, quote unquote, and Madina Munawwara, what happened? Was there any fight? No. These people came to him and they came in his company and they were in awe of him and they lived with them and they were in love with him. And that's why they all invited Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Madina Munawwara, you know, come to him. And he, he meant that everybody, almost everybody became Muslim in Madina Munawwara. Because of his ikhlaq. And you look into the life of Madina Munawwara, subhanAllah, Bedouin came, a Bedouin came in the masjid. He came and asked Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam questions that after he was done before he was to go back he went into a corner of the masjid in the masjid he started urinating in the masjid he started urinating you tell me if a person comes in from outside and starts urinating right here what will we do he's not going to go back to life right <laughs> so <laughs> so how about it did the same <coughs> Sahaba got very angry. What are you doing? They actually stood up to actually make him run away. They said, what are you doing? You are urinating in the masjid. Sayyidina Rasulullah said, they were learning. They were students. Sayyidina Rasulullah said, sit down. Don't go to him. Let him do what he's doing. After he was done, he said to the Sahaba, bring water. He said, just clean that place. And then he called that bedroom, come here. This is our masjid. This is the place of worship. We don't do these things here and with so much love and this brother he went back to his village he said you know I met a man who was such a beautiful man and all of his village became Muslim just by this one act of him this is Islam subhanallah you look into the seerah and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the way that he was tortured, Allahu Akbar. You know, I don't think that there was anybody who was who went through more calamities than this man sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his life. Who is there who actually buries all of his children except one with his own hands? Who is there? They were forced. He and his whole family and all the people that accepted him. They were forced to go leave Makkah Mukarma, live outside Makkah Mukarma, and they will not even give them any food. Total boycott. And small little kids, babies. And what were they doing? What were they eating? The leaves of the trees. Leaves of the trees, they were boiling it, feeding it to their kids. So all the people who have kids, they realize that thing. If one night your child be sleep without eating, look as the heart of a mother. What goes through her heart? Oh my kid, he slept without eating. She would be so, she feels so bad about it. And well, the first thing, the next morning, she would ask, oh, My son, you must be hungry, you know, let, let, let me serve you breakfast. All night she would be worried about her son that she did, he didn't eat before he went to sleep. Three years, they were eating leaves of the trees, boiling them. Imagine the torture that he went through. SubhanAllah, they would physically torture him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his sahaba, all of the people who believed in him, we know Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala, and he became Muslim, and his master, he would you know, take off his shirt, and would put him to that hot burning sand, and will, you know, will torture him, put a big stone on his chest, and would say, Bibi man, and he would say, Ahad, Ahad, Ahad. You know, you only realize that when you go and see what happened. One of my friends, you know, he went to do Umrah and for some reason he lost his, 
his slippers, his shoes, and he had to walk just from outside, uh, like in front of the hotel, which is right in front of the haram, to the haram. Yet in that small little distance, which is like what, less than a minute, less than half a minute. And I saw him the other day after he came back. You know, all of the skin from beneath his feet were 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 melted. Was melted. Allah Akbar. I asked him what happened. He told me the story. And oh, first thing I thought of was Sayyidina Bilal. First thing I thought of was Sayyidina Bilal. He was forced to lie down without any clothes on the hot burning sand. It's very hot. His skin must have been melted. So much torture. His blessed daughter, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, blessed daughter were married to Abu, the son of the Abu Jahl before Islam. And after they accepted Islam, they tortured them so much and so much so that they divorced her. And she was expecting and she was coming to Medina Munawwara and because of the torture that she went through, she had a miscarriage. And she actually passed away and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam buried her and he was crying. Just imagine the torture. The, the, the feelings of the Prophet ﷺ. Nobody has gone through these sort of things. With I know that people do go through, but as like so much. And then there was a time that Prophet ﷺ, and you know what? Prophet ﷺ was then also, also forced to do hijrat. Right? Also was forced to do hijrat. Before he was doing migrating to Madinah, he went to Mecca, to to, to, to Kaaba, and he said to the person who was in charge of the keys of Kaaba, his name was Usman. He said, Usman, can you please open the door of Kaaba for me? I want to worship in here. He said, I'm not going to open it. He said, I will not open it. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know, Usman, a day will come that I'll be standing at your place. And he left with that tears in his eyes. He was crying. He said, looked at the Kaaba and said, you know what? Oh, Kaaba, I don't want to live, live, uh, leave you. I love you so much, but these people don't let me live here anymore. What can I do? Just think about the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. This is what happened to him. Just imagine. Not just somebody not giving a phone call. Just imagine the torture that he went through. And a time came that he returned to Mecca Mukarma as the victorious leader. But not an arrogant leader, a humble leader. His blessed face was down. It was touching the that hump of the camel. So much so. And he was saying, Sadaq Allah wa'da wa nasar abda wa hazam al ahzab wa wahda la sharika la. That Allah Ta'ala has indeed he fulfilled his promise. And his victory, he, his victory has come. And he has defeated the whole army by himself. He was not associating that to him to himself and his people. You think Allah Ta'ala has And subhanAllah, you know, the whole army, and you, you can understand an army enters another city to conquer that. What will they do? And all of the people in Makkah, Karma, they hid in their houses. And all of the people were thinking that the people will come and they will open our houses and they will take our women and I don't know what will happen. And nobody came. There was silence. And they waited the whole day. At night they thought they started scratching their heads. What's happening? Where are these people? Their own army has come. And they went and they see the people are doing the love of the Kaaba and people are crying in front of the Kaaba. That was their goal. Their goal wasn't to you know, dis- dishonor people because this was the ikhlaq that was taught to them by the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered everybody and he said, what I'm going to do with you today? You tell me. And they knew his ikhlaq. He said, Akhun Kareem, Ibn Akhun Kareem, you are the generous man, son of a generous man. He said, Go, Antum Uttalaqa, you go, there is no blame on you. La tasriba alaykum al yawm. You all go, there is no blame on you. I've forgiven all of you. Then he called Usman. He said, Usman, where are the keys? Where are the keys of the Kaaba? He had no choice but to take out the keys here. Prophet sallallahu opened the door of the Kaaba, went in, Bilal come. See Bilal, he was tortured. For what? He was tortured to leave. Ahad, Ahad, Allah is one, Allah is one. Bilal, you deserve it. Come, let's break the idols. You prove that Allah is one. Allah is one. And they broke the idols. And he prayed inside the Kaaba. And he came out. And now everybody was looking. And we said, honor having the keys of the Kaaba. And all the close Sahaba were with the Prophet 
Wiseman and Abu Bakr and Usman and, and Umar and Ali and all of the other Sahaba, everybody was waiting that possibly I would be the one who would get the honor of getting the keys of the Kaaba. And everybody was looking at him. And what did Prophet Sallallahu do? Usman, where are you? And Usman came forward. Usman, here is the key. Here is the key, Usman. You didn't give it to me the other day. I gave it to you back. It will remain in your family until the day of judgment. And Usman said, Ya Rasulullah, you open the door of the Kaaba, please unlock, also unlock the lock of my heart. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. This is Ikhlaq. This is our deen. And subhanAllah, you know, every prophet was given a mu'ajizah or a dalil or a proof. So you know, Musa alayhi salam, he was, when he was going to Quran, what did Allah Ta'ala give him? His stick, and he said, you put your hand under your armpit and when you come, you'll take it out and be shining with light. And that is the proof of his prophet, that I am indeed a prophet. So you know, Isa salam was given so many miracles. He would raise people from dead and he would you know, give cure to the, to the sick. What was with the Prophet Sallallahu There are many things, but one thing that Prophet Sallallahu was given as a proof that he was a prophet, Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an, that he said, فَقَدْ لَبِثْتُ فِيكُمْ أُمُرًا مِنْ قَبْلِهِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِرُونَ I have been living with you for so long. Don't you reflect? Yani, in other words, look at who am I? You have been calling me a liar and a sahir and a kazab and a magician and all of that. I've been looking with you. Look at my ikhlaq. You are the one who were calling me what? Sadiq and, and, and Amin. You were calling me a truthful man and a trustworthy man. So all of that was the ikhlaq. Allah Ta'ala is saying, take that as a proof to the people that you are indeed a prophet. That your ikhlaq, everybody knows you inside out. You know, who are people who are most intimate with or most yeah, anything in who, who knows your secrets the most? Your wife. Maybe you're very smiling and you know have a good character with friends and other people, but you know all of our character actually is shown in front of our wives. You know, one of the sheikh he said that, you know, he said that I'm not going to look at you. He said to one of his students that I'm not going to look at you as to how many rakas of the hajjah you pray, you will pray. And how much charity will you give? I will ask your wife. If your wife will testify to this fact that you have good ikhlaq, then you will indeed be a good man. In reality, that's true because we live with our wives 24 7. And our wives, they know the secret of our character that normally no, normal people don't know that. And people will all normally ask their wife not to tell our, their bad things to other people, right? But what did Prophet Sallallahu say? He said to his wife, whatever you see in me, you tell people. Whatever you see in me, you go and tell people out. Yani nothing is hidden from us, from the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And look at what his wife had to say about him. Somebody asked me, the Aisha Allah ta'ala anha, that how was his character? She said, haven't you read the Qur'an? Kana khulakuhu al-Qur'an. His character was Qur'an. All the characteristics of the believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, he was just like, he was just that. When Allah ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطِبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Walking with humbleness on the earth, not argumenting with people, not fighting with people, controlling their anger, forgiving people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You name it, whatever is in the Quran, he had that. That was his character and who is saying that? None but his own wife. Who knows the best inside out of that man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, I can go on and on, but my friends and my elders, you know, we have to work on our Islam. This is the struggle that we have to go through, all of us. All of us. We have to care for each other. We have to love each other. We have to be those forgiving people. We have to be those loving, caring people. We have to develop ourselves, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You know, when we have been given a heart, all of us have been given a heart, a spiritual heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Allah says that on the day of judgment nothing will benefit you except who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the soundness of the spiritual heart. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَطَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ On the day of judgment the only thing that will benefit you, your wealth and children are not going to benefit you. Your cars, your houses, your jobs, your businesses, they are not going to benefit you. What's going to benefit you? Your sound heart. What is a sound heart? Sound heart is the one that is free of all spiritual blemishes. Yani, having bad character, it's free of all bad character, and that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the soundness of the heart. <coughs> Allah ta'ala wants what? A sound heart. Allah ta'ala is saying that's going to benefit you. Only thing, nothing else. That means a serious thing, right? Nothing is going to benefit us on the day in the Quran. I'm not saying it. And what do we do? We have made our heart a garbage can. We have put all of that filth in our heart. Ill feelings, hatred, animosity, arrogance, jealousy, you name it. Everybody has some issues. Lack of control of desire, lust. And we can go on and on. Some people are arrogant about themselves. You know, they subhanAllah, they, they, they pray five times a day and they think they are the best people on the face of the earth. Arrogant about themselves. Some people have wealth, they feel arrogant about their self and without them about themselves. Some people drive their sports car and they always they don't even care about the other people who are walking down the street. They have arrogance. Some people have knowledge and they're arrogant about themselves and they think that everybody is ignorant and I am the person who's knowledgeable. And everybody knows their issues. Some people have anger issues, cannot control their anger. <coughs> SubhanAllah. They cannot control their anger. And they harm people with their anger. And the, the person that they harm the most is not nobody but their own wife. SubhanAllah, there are people who actually divorce their wives out of anger. And then they regret later on. Then they call the muftis and you know, oh, I divorced my wife out of anger. Will my divorce un- occur? Well, of course. Divorce is done in anger. Who is the person who says to his wife that I love you and I divorce you? Is there anybody like that? SubhanAllah. This is the state of the people. They cannot control their anger. They can they control cannot control their lust. They cannot control their eyes. They go out, subhanAllah, pray in the masjid, step out of the house and there are women walking around, they start staring at these women. And they go and this they turn on their internet and they, anything just pops up and rather than clicking it and not looking at her and they will just click on and they will follow what, and to that website and start staring at all of that filth that's out there. You cannot even control their desires. Fulfill their desires by themselves. That's all. They are all sins. Lack of, lack of control of desires. That's like putting that filth in our hearts. And, and people are jealous about others. Oh, he had a loan and I had a loan and he has been able to give his loan back and I'm still struggling. Start getting jealous of that person. And some people are more sharp than other. Allah Ta'ala has given them a little more intellect and they start feeling jealous about that person. And you can go on and on. And people have all of that fit filled in their heart as if it's a garbage can. It's not a garbage can. It is a blessing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He's given us, my friends. We have to protect it. We have to clean it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that paradise is only the reward of those people who are able to purify their hearts. ذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ مَنْ تَزَكَّى The paradise is only the reward for those people who come to Allah ta'ala with the purity of their hearts and nobody else. So this is the goal of our life that we have to build our character. This is the goal of our day that we become human beings, the true human beings. And subhanAllah, you know, we have to be those people. And if we look and we have to, that's why we have to study the seerah of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to. All of us. Otherwise, you know, I mean, that gives us that encouragement. We have to be loving to children. We have to be caring for children. SubhanAllah, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was once sitting with Sayyidina Hassan and Sayyidina Hussain radiallahu ta'ala in his lab and he was kissing them. And a man came to him and he said, Ya Rasulullah, you kiss children. I have ten children, I've never kissed any one of them. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that if you Allah Ta'ala takes out mercy from your heart, what can I do about you? Allah But we don't even play with our children anymore. We don't love them, we don't care for them, we don't talk to them. All what we do is, you know, scold them and always are harsh to them, never smile at them, never share what they have to say to them. This is cruel, this is being cruel. This is 
not being human, it's not being a Muslim. We have to give time to our children. That's Islam. Once Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came out, you know, it was a day of Eid, and he had seen a Hassan and Sayyidina Hussein that the Allah Taala unaware them. And you know, they're all, they're going to the Eid prayer, and he, there were children playing on the street. There were children playing on the street, and everybody was so happy. It was Eid day, and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sees that there is one little kid who was sitting on the side of the road, and he was very sad. And Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to that kid, and he said, "You know, my, what happened? Why are you sad? This Eid day." And that kid said, "Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, today is Eid, and everybody has his parents, and everybody has brought gifts for their children. You know, I'm an orphan. I'm an orphan. I'm a yatim. I, I don't have anybody who could bring me new clothes." Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "Come with me." He took that kid with him, went to his house, and said to Sayyidah Aisha of the Allah Taala Anha that you know bring the clothes of Hassan and Hussein, you know give him bath and put new clothes to him. And after some time, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came out of his house and in a state that Sayyidah Hassan was on one side, Sayyidah Hussein was on the other side, and this kid was sitting on the blessed shoulders of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And all the kids, they said that you know, I wish that we all were orphans today. He found a father that nobody could find. Allah, but this was the ikhlaq of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with widows, with orphans, with women, his wives. And you look into the seerah, and we were talking about Sayyidina Aisha radhiyallahu taala anha this morning, and the way that he was with his wives, amazing. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once he went to his house and he said to Sayyidah Aisha who was drinking water, Aisha, please leave some for me. And she left a little bit of water in the cup for Sayyidah Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and gave it to him. He could have taken a new glass of water. He said, Aisha, leave some for me. And she left some for him and he took the glass and he said, Aisha, where did you drink from? And she pointed at one place and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he, he moved the cup and put his blessed lips at the same place where Sayyidah Aisha had put her lips. This is ikhlaq. This is ikhlaq. And we, the way that we are with our wives, and we all know our stories of our houses. Allahu Akbar. Our houses are like like a hell on the face of the earth. Subhanallah. There are so many cases. There are so many cases of domestic violence in the Muslim community. Allahu Akbar. I feel so sad about it. There are centers out there of social welfare who take all of these cases of domestic violence. So the Muslim community, Allah Akbar, how come you're calling yourself a Muslim? This is not zira. This is not zira. Once Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to the house and see the Aisha was having a headache, and she was headache, and Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked at her in pain and he held his head, his own head. He said, Aisha, I am having a headache. Allah Akbar. This is the end. This is Islam. He was always smiling. You know, Sahaba explained him that when you see him at the first instant, you are you felt you you have an awe of him. But you, once you go and sit in his company for a little while, you will love him. You will love him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was mercy to the animals. Forget about human beings. He was mercy to the animals. You know, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In one of the hadiths, he said that when you travel through a land where there is plenty of vegetation, you should go slow and make sure that your animals get a chance to eat from it. This is the once for a Sahabi was coming, and he saw that there was a nest on the tree, and there were you know uh, uh, there were only two uh, small little baby birds in there. He held those baby birds and started playing with it, and like he he started. He took those baby birds and took them along with him. After some time, the mother bird she came and she saw there were no baby birds and started searching for them. And he, she found that they were with the Sahabi and she started flying around him over his head. And he didn't leave, let them go. So she came and she, the baby bird, the mother bird came and sat on his head, on around his shoulder. And she, Prophet, he went to the Prophet sallallahu and told him the whole story. He said, "Go, you know." Go and put it, put them back. What are you doing? They also have emotions. They're living beings. Even mercy to to the birds, 
what have we become? We have become literally animals, and those animals were harmful animals who harm everybody without any reason. So this is not the. We all have to develop our ikhlaq because this is the indeed. This is the. Innama bu'ithu li utami ma makaram al akhlaq. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that I've only been sent to perfect noble character, and all of the issues that we have, all of us have our own issues. Some have anger issues, some have lust issues, some have arrogance issues, some have animosity issues, ill feeling issues, hatred issues, jealousy issues. Everybody has their issues, and we must crush our nafs, and we need to make sure that we bring ourselves within the bounds of Sharia. Sharia that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants, not our own made Sharia. Please learn. You have ulama in your community. You must come and learn from them. From them, and must implement all of what you learn in your life. This is. What we are here for? We are here in an examination hall, trying to prepare for our deaths. We are not here to eat, drink, having married relations, having children, and you know, then go back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala without even gathering anything. We are not here for that purpose. We are here to prepare for our death, and we need to work hard for that. And whatever it takes, if you have an anger issue, and whatever it takes, we must suppress our anger. We must need to make sure that we control it and not. Harm other people from our anger. We must need, we must need to make sure that we benefit other people and not harm other people. If our we cannot control our tongue, we must learn to control our tongue. Whatever is our issue, we must need we must need to make sure that we fix that before it's too late. And I tell you, my friends, on the day of judgment, nobody is going to leave us alone. That day is a very tough day. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran. That day is a very tough day. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran. That day is a very tough day. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran. That day is a very tough day. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran. That day is a very tough day. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran. That day is a very tough day. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran. Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, who don't have money, who are poor people. He said, No, the bankrupt of people are those people who go to Allah Taala with a lot of good actions. They will have their prayers and their charity and all of the good deeds that they might have done. But because they will have harmed people, these people will come and stand in a line to take away their rights. And they will come and say, Oh, you harmed me the other day. You didn't talk to me the other day properly. You had ill feelings for me. You backbited me. You 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 you, you were jealous of me. They will all come and they will say, you know, give me a good deed, and he will keep giving them his good deeds one by one, one by one, one by one, and at a time will come that all of his good deeds will be gone, and there will still be people that he has harmed in the dunya, and they will still be in line, and he will have nothing to give back. So what will they do? They will start dumping their sins on his head, and going to Allah Taala with a lot of good actions and ending up with a lot of sins, and he'll be thrown into the fire. Allah. So that is why it is so important. This is why that we have to work hard to improve our character. Please, please work hard for that. It is not a joke. And of course, you know, when we become those people, then we'll be a walking zombie. People will come and will want to become like us. Will want to become like us because this is humanity. This is indeed humanity. Subhanallah, you know, I was telling my friends I was in Chicago and I was in Ohio, I was studying in Ohio State University doing my master's in electrical engineering, and I would go out early morning from my university and I would see people walking to me, non-Muslims, white people. I would say, they would smile at me, not even knowing who am I. How are you doing today? Good morning. And Subhanallah, you meet a Muslim brother and he would like frown at you and won't even say anything to you. Well, <laughs> he has taken our character. He is saying good morning. How are you doing? And he doesn't even know who am I smiling at me early morning every day. And how are how do we meet it with each other? We don't even have a smile when we meet with each other. Subhanallah. As you know, as I've done something wrong to you. Please, we have to develop our character, my friends. We must. And this is Deen, and this is the core of the Deen, and every single thing that we do, and we have to do. Don't misunderstand me, please. There are some people who say, "Oh, my flag is very good. I don't need to pray or I don't need to fast." I'm not saying that. I'm saying these these are the base. The prayers, the fasting, the Hajj, the Zakat are the base. They are the the ground for our being. Everything has to be built on that. But for the building that needs to be built on that base is the building of character. This is the and we must work on it before it's too late. We all must have to learn all of the stuff we can understand and also.